Welcome to Scrollin' episode 101. I'm Ket, joining me as always, Dave, a star jumper. What's going on, man? Not much. All right. Good talk. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> episode 101, yeah. just like that uh, that famous Disney movie, 101 podcast mm-hmm, episodes, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're all just sequels from here on out. Mm-hmm. 102, 103. It's, man, after 100, it's just like not as exciting anymore. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to have that energy anymore, guys. It's all downhill from here. Uh, start planning episode 200. Start planning now. What, uh, you know, is episode 200 the next big one? Or is it like, you know, is it round to like to 250? You know? Maybe we'll make a big deal out of every prime number episode. (laughs) (laughs) Prime numbers are weird, you know? They're like an erratic pattern. So we might get like two back to back. Like, hey! Yeah, it's just two big episodes. The (laughs) two-parter. So let's talk about the public test server. Uh, of course, the Necrom chapter is around the corner, and we are in week four of the PTS. So we're going to talk about weeks three and four, uh, which basically most of the, the stuff happened in week four, actually, this go around. Um, normally, week three is the big balance patch where they kind of do all the, the adjustments that they're going to do. But uh, this go around, they said they needed an extra week to do that stuff. So uh, uh, not much happened in week three and week four. Just yesterday, really, as of the time we're recording this, is when we kind of got the big balance adjustments and um, and stuff. It's not a ton, but, uh, you know, there's a little bit of juice here. There's there's some stuff. There's, there's some things. There's some things. Yeah. Probably the... It, it's pretty clear, like, where most of their effort went was just kind of getting the Arcanist where yeah. they want it and making a bunch of, uh, of adjustments to that. And not just, like, number tweaks. Like, they've kind of changed a handful of abilities Pretty considerably, I would say. Okay. We're not going to dig into those details just because probably most of the people listening to this don't even know what those abilities do anyway, you know? So <laughs> we don't really have a frame of reference there. So we're just going to wait until the, the live patch gets here to, to dig into that. But I was thinking, like, once it goes live, we probably should do an episode where we do, like, really dig into that class, like, s- skill by skill. Let's go through it and see what this dude's all about. That is a pretty good idea. That's, uh, I, I think like we that might do idea. that. We might make that like a, the focus of an episode, like right around release. That'd be fun. That's a good idea. I feel like we're kind of at that level at PTS, especially for me and you, you know, because we keep up week to week. And, and for anybody who keeps up week to week, is that we're kind of at that point where it's like, all right, we're in this, this, this limbo area where it's like, we're just ready for it. We're ready for it to come out. Like, mm-hmm. ready to go. Like, just, just give me the patch. Just, just give, give me the patch me. already. Let's go. I'm ready, I'm I'm ready, ready for this started. one, man. So yeah, we'll talk about the Arcanist and stuff uh, another time. But um, Dragon Knights, if you can believe it, they actually got a little bit of a nerf uh, for the <laughs> for the DKs out there who are using Burning Talons. Uh, they nerfed the dot damage by twenty seven percent, and then they extended the duration uh, by an extra second. So it's five seconds now instead of four seconds. That's like a double nerf. Yeah, that's that's kind of secretly a little bit of a double nerf because that. You know, it's it's like X damage over four seconds, right? So now it's mm-hmm. X damage over five seconds. So that that base damage is nerfed by twenty seven percent. Plus, it's stretched out over an additional second, which is going to amount to basically another twenty percent less damage per tick. You know, so yeah. um, it's going to feel more like a forty seven ish percent nerf. Like in a PvP context, the extra second you're not going to care about that. You'd rather have more damage, you know, sooner. Oh yeah. Um, but of course the, the main thing that burn that you use burning talents for is that immobilize. So, you know, it still has that value. Uh, it's an, an incredibly strong dot right now. So it, it's not so surprising, honestly, that that's getting nerfed. I'm always okay with, uh, nerfs to DK if it's an ability that I don't use. <laughs> yeah. And this honestly will not affect many DKs. Like I know you don't use it. Uncle Sam has like an unstoppable Dragon Knight. Yeah. He doesn't use it, you know, like not, not every DK uses it. So not that big of a deal. And for those who do use it, it's still going to be very good. Or they can just pick another amazing Dragon Knight ability <laughs> to put in its place if they want. Um, so that's it for Dragon Knight. Uh, Templars, guys, oh, I think it happened. 
Um, they they must have listened to the last episode when we were like, guys, <laughs> fix backlash. <laughs> uh, so you're welcome, everyone. We we made it happen. Uh, they, I guess they buffed backlash. Um, so uh, what they say is backlash. Backlash is the base ability of power of the light and purifying light. It's the main delayed burst attack for the Templar class. Um, so it now needs 60% less total damage to reach that maximum value. So it'll be easier to to get that cap there. Um, the devs, the dev comment, <laughs> my own kind of paraphrase, says that it's still going to be challenging to reach that full value in PvP. Like you're not always going to be able to do it. <laughs> and this hilarious <laughs> sentence: uh, they say they want Templars to retain a weakness in some capacity. That's why calm down, it challenging. Calm down out there. All right. Just... Yeah. Thank goodness they're going to retain a weakness. Well, like... I'll go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Such a funny, just like honestly, very tone deaf uh, comment to make. But uh, you know, aside from that, uh, the reports do seem positive on this change. I've read some comments on the forums of people that have tested out this um, this backlash buff, and it seems legitimately a good buff. Like it's hitting for okay. like ten, eleven k for like a good offensively spec uh, Templar in PvP. Oh, interesting. That's kind of where it was before. This is inter- interesting to me because you know. Uh, I think you had you had mentioned to me that you probably still won't use this. Like, it's kind of weird, but it's like it might be too late. Like, it's been bad so long that the builds have kind of moved away from it. Yeah, I I think that might be where I'm at with it. It's like because this ability was so bad, I started exploring other build options that don't rely on it, and I've I've found a really great build that I like a lot, and I think I like it even better than the old setup that I had. So yeah, now that it's good, I I'm not I don't think I'll even slot it even so, just because I'm I'm kind of committed to this build now. But that's fine. You know, I'm uh I'm glad that it's getting fixed. And I have another Templar, a ranged beam plar that does use this ability. There you go. And at least they're they're finally going the right direction with Templar, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we've got we've gotten a few buffs with this patch, right? Or mm-hmm. or we're getting some with uh you know, we'll go through them here in just a little while, but we're getting that major protection. We're getting that new Sun Sphere five percent boost to your class abilities. The rune has it's had its healing increase. Basically, we have this thing here. Mm-hmm. So it's whether they're sufficient buffs or not is another discussion. But they are at least putting some attention on Templar, you know, and trying to do something. And I feel good about that. And honestly, my Templar, my Stamplar, my main old Betsy isn't fantastic shape so i'm really not complaining these buffs are just going to make her even better so really just dragonite and templar are the only two classes that have gotten anything and then um under the bow skill line the arrow spray ability i'm pretty sure this is a misprint it's gotta be it's the exact same text as the the dragonite burning talons ability um the the dots nerf by 27 percent, and the uh the duration is extended to five seconds but when you log on to PTS and you look at this ability, it's still four seconds. I can't really get a sense of if the damage is different or not. I don't really have a way to compare that. But um, something doesn't match up. Yeah, at least that duration's not matching up. And since the text is literally an identical match to the Burning Talons text, I'm wondering if that's just like some kind of copy paste mistake. Yeah, that's what I think. But I do think that something must have changed for it to at least appear. Yeah, why is Aerospray there at all? Like, something must have changed. So something we don't know what to. that is exactly. <laughs> and then there's some mythic, uh, some changes to these new mythic items here. So we have the Esoteric Environment Greaves. Um, so as a reminder, that's this new one that, um, as of week one, it's while you're above 33% stamina, you reduce your damage taken by 50% and lose 1567 stamina when you take direct damage. And that has a 0.5 second cooldown. Um, so they've adjusted that, so now you have to be above 50% stamina instead of 33% stamina to get that. It's only going to reduce direct damage taken, not damage over time or anything like that. And they reduce the amount of stamina that gets consumed. It's 968 instead of that uh, 1567 when you take direct damage, but it's a 0.25 second cooldown now, not a 0.5 second cooldown. So... That's a lot of stuff, but yeah, basically um, it only reduces direct damage rather than all damage, so it's going to be weak against dot builds. It's only active while you're above 50% stamina, not 33%. Um, 
it, it, it drains less stamina unless you're basically outnumbered because it has that faster cooldown now. So if you're against like multiple targets, then you're going to be draining a lot more stamina in that case. Yeah. Definitely a nerf. I mean, it no longer mitigates dots. It has a lower uptime. It's it's more stamina drain when you're like 1vx. Definitely nerfed, but I still think this thing's yeah. going to be annoying. Yeah, I think that's my biggest problem with this thing is that the, the people who use this are going to go all in on on this and sustain. They're not going to focus damage. Like, you know, mm -hmm. they're just their focus is going to be to unkillable. They they're not going to deal damage. Just they will not be able to be killed, and they're just going to go full sustain to keep their stamina up. I just, I, I mean. I, it's a perfect mythic for objective mode battlegrounds, yeah, that's, right? That's I mean, it's my just thing. like a dream come it, true. Man, those are just not fun. Like, it seems like such a simple sentence, but running into those types of players is just not fun in BGs. Like, you just hit on them, they can't die, so you just kind of move on, but then they always chase you, and they're always just there. And so you're just, mm -hmm. like, wasting resources on them. I, I, I mean, I could see this being really good for even, like, on like in a PvE sense, like a tank, like, PV tank would be very hard to kill with this thing on there, but yeah, while you're above fifty percent stamina, you basically have permanent block. Except your stamina recovery is still active. You know that's not getting disabled. So yep, it's it's better than block. Plus, you can also block in, on yeah. top of it. I just kind of wish that this mythic would get the the PVE treatment, and it would get that like against monsters treatment. Mm -hmm, sure, I, I think that would a hundred percent. Because this in PGs is just going to be a nightmare. It's just going to be a player that doesn't do damage. You can't kill them. They're just going to be there. Like you said, it's it's probably going to be great for objective players, but man. Yeah, get some sturdy armor, some block cost reduction glyphs. And yeah, I feel like you could really cheese this this thing quite a bit. Yeah. And if you, I mean, if you, if, if you don't have to focus on damage at all and you're just focusing on sustain and you get some crazy stamina recovery number, like, it's probably going to be pretty easy. Even if you're taking that, that hit on your stamina, it's probably going to be pretty easy to keep your stamina up. Yeah. Uh, dot builds. I guess that's that's the counter mm -hmm. if you come up against mm -hmm. those guys. Or just walking away from them is also an effective counter. That, that's that's going to be my counter. <laughs> Here's the one everyone's talking about, though. The Velothi Urmage's Amulet. It's the new mythic that um, on week one, it added fi about 5k penetration. It increases your crit damage by 15% and increases your damage done to monsters by 15%, but then it reduces your light and heavy attacks by 99%. So that was week one. What they've done to it this week is they've reduced that penetration from 5,000 to 1,650. Ooh, 1,650. Quite a decrease there. Um, and now it grants minor force rather than a unique 15% crit damage buff. Minor force is 10%. This is what we would call, you know, the original the original phrase from the podcast. They stoonsed it, is what they did. They done stoonsed it. I think we gotta, I don't think that even sums it up. I think we gotta <laughs> start calling it, instead of the stoons treatment, it's the Velothi Urmage's amulet treatment <laughs> now. <laughs> It got velothied. <laughs> they they velothied this thing, man. My goodness. It went from being like, whoa, this thing seems a little out of control. Maybe they need to tone that back a little bit to straight to the dumpster, man. Don't even waste your yeah. time on this I think thing. that's the surprising part to me is that, you know, it, it was very popular. It seemed really kind of OP beam builds, you know, night blade gank builds. They were kind of keeping their eye on it in a BG sense. and But in a BVE sense, there was... There was kind of people, I think, that were kind of looking at it, too. And now, I don't think it's going to be good in BGs or PvE. Like, I could be wrong, but, like, I just don't see it be working in either regard now. Maybe maybe just solo questing if you just want to kind of go on autopilot. So for some com sake of comparison here, the Vulcan Scoria monster set, the one piece of that gives you 1487 penetration compared to the 1650 that this is offering so barely any less plus minor force i looked it up uh by my count there are 11 sources of minor force in the game unless you count uh skill morphs if you count the morphs of the different skills there's more like 15 sources of minor force so you're not gonna you're not gonna waste a mythic on something that you have an abundant you know access to uh, you could do a one-piece Vulcan and have Race Against Time on the back bar, and you have this mythic item, essentially, <laughs> you know? Um, 
So PvP straight out the door. PvE, I think you're better off with Oaken Soul. Just do the yeah. Oaken Soul build. Yep, absolutely. If you want something easy, you know, you don't have to light attack weave with that one either. You know. So. Well, and that's the same. You know, that's the thing. Is it, it's like you said. You, you put an Oaken Soul in there, and there's just so much easier ways to get everything this mythic's getting you. And with Oaken Soul, you get all the survivability as well. Mm -hmm. A way more simple play style as well. A lot more stuff. And. You know, with this thing, sure, you get your back bar, but, I mean, a lot of that back bar stuff's going to be buffs and stuff that Oakensole gives you, you know, so just do Oakensole. Yeah, losing your back bar is a lot less to me than losing your light and heavy attacks. Yeah, and especially when you consider that to wear this, you have to not wear a different mythic item. Yeah, it's just, it's bad. I, I will not be surprised at all if this gets further adjusted. They nerfed it way, way too much. Yeah. No one's going to be interested in this thing at all. Uh, we still have a ways to go to the live patch. Um, I think there will be one more actual PTS patch. Um, and Or even they may even, you know, kind of stealthily do something to it when it goes live. But I would be very surprised if it goes live like this. As crazy as <laughs> this sounds crazy, but with this new setup of it, you could just take away the, the reduce your light and heavy attack damage by 99% and I'd still be okay with it. If it was just a mythic that gave you the you know the sixteen fifty penetration and the the minor force. Honestly, yeah, they don't even, okay it doesn't it. even need the penalty. You're right. You're totally it doesn't, right. It doesn't need the penalty at all. Just the, what it is is like okay, like that's a decent mythic, I guess. Yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> and even then, it's pretty lackluster. Honestly. Yeah, even then, it's like <laughs> eh, I guess it's okay. Like you know, maybe on certain yeah. builds, but the I fact that still it just, use gaze of Sithis, but yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. So that's that's that. Um, and then this transformative hope set, they've adjusted this thing. Um, so a reminder, this is the one that um, when you heal yourself or an ally that's below 40% health, you give them this spark of hope for three seconds. And then if they're above 90% health when that ends, then you both gain major heroism for 15 seconds. Really awesome. Seems like a really awesome set. Such a cool um, set. They just... They changed that threshold to 50% health instead of 40%. So when you heal someone below 50% health, um, so it's just going to make it easier to activate that. I honestly think I'm going to try to get this thing and make a support build out of it. Yeah, I think I'm with you. I, I'm really tempted lately to, you know, my, my Templar heal support main, uh, Davius is, you know, he's kind of this damage buff support. It's just powerful assault and spell power cure. It just buffs the damage, but I'm really tempted lately, you know, with a lot of these new sets and kind of things that have come out. To switch it from instead of giving a damage buff to just do ulti buff, like just yeah. generate ultimate for the team and still be a healer but support. I just think that would be a really cool, unique build. And I think if I go that way, this set will absolutely be a part of it. I really want to do that thing that we talked about on the last episode with this set and that new mythic that gives your ultimate to your, yeah. your allies. That just seems like that's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to put mm -hmm. those together. So. I well, and I'm you gonna, can even do, you know, the, uh, a couple patches ago, they have the, uh, I don't remember them off the top of my head, but, you know, there's the one that you drink a potion and it gives your entire, you gives you and your group ultimate. Like, there's a couple yep. sets out there oh, yeah. now that you, I think you could really generate pretty crazy ultimate for a team on a support build. I think it'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I want to try that. Maybe on my Templar or, I don't know if there's any particular class that's, like, good for that. Probably not. Probably just better on a warden. If you're healing, just be a warden. As long as you're a Nord. That's the only, the only <laughs> requirement. <laughs> so um, that catches us up on the patch notes. Davis, what do you think? What are you looking forward to the most with this patch coming up? You know, I thought about this. It's kind of weird to say this. You can tell me how cra like just weird it is to say it, but just continued good BG meta. Like... Yeah. So weird to say, like the BG meta feels great right now. And I'm like, I'm excited to know that going forward, it's like, I feel pretty confident that it's going to still be really good going forward. Like, um, BGs feel really good right now. And all the stuff they're doing, I'm okay with. Like, there's nothing that's crazy or going to, you know, make anything go nuts. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about my Bokro getting buffed. The only thing is, is I don't know if he actually is for sure getting buffed anymore. Um, he uses that acid spray, so uh. the, question, the question mark with that, that was his like major huge buff. That's his spammable, so it was a pretty huge buff for him, but I don't know if that's still the case or not, but we, we shall see. Now. We shall see. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I agree with you. The 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 PvP meta, at least in Battlegrounds, is pretty awesome right now. And um I think that is gonna continue, although we are getting this new class. We are getting this atomic bomb about to be kind of dropped on top of everything. But I'm here for it though. I wanna see that kind of crazy and is it oh, and yeah. I kind of feel like maybe that was intentional. Like they they've created this sort of I don't know, kind of mellow yeah, it's PvP tame. environment right now where it's not super volatile. It seems fairly well balanced. And it's just ripe to just disrupt that whole situation, you know. Let's throw this new class in here and just mess it all up. Uh, I can't wait. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm looking forward to my Bokro getting buffed with that skull, that skull spammable. Um, mm-hmm. He uses that. All the Templar buffs, Backlash, Major Protection on the Gap Closer, um, the the heal from the Rune, that 5% Sun Sphere buff on Solar Barrage. All of those things are going to be great. Uh, Mara's Balm getting a nerf. Looking forward to that. I think the thing I'm looking forward to the most, it may seem obvious, but um, just leveling up a new class and, and getting to know that, I think that's the thing I'm by far the most excited about. But not just, like, I don't know, I'm not just going to power level this thing, you know, and like try to put to build a build together as fast as I can. Like, I'm planning to play the content, do all the quests, you know, to completion and everything, and just take my time with it and... I'm not going to like farm gear or anything. I'm just going to, just like the first time I ever played this game, just go on an adventure, whatever gear I find along the way, that's what I'll wear. Oh, okay. Old school. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just just play the content. And then once I'm through the content, like whatever level I'm at at that point, then I'll start power leveling from there, you know, and go ahead and get get the dude all the way leveled up and and let's get let's get a PvP build together and everything like that. But I feel like, That'll be like a nice way to kind of slowly get to know the class. Like, I'll just unlock this skill. This might not be a skill that I would use, but since it's the only thing I have access to, I'm, I'm going to use it right now. So it gives me a chance to sort of really get to know that thing uh, where I otherwise might not do that. So I think that's the thing I'm looking forward to the most. Uncle Sam says, I hear the skull buff makes that empowered skull do 90% of the damage your blast bones will do. Might be a nice combo. Old Uncle Sam, always trying to bring the crow back. Okay, oh, you said empowered. Crow. That like made me think of like the named buff empowered. That's not <laughs> how you meant it. So that that fifty percent, that third cast of the of the skull is almost hits hits almost as hard as blast bones. That's nice. And yeah, that'll be part of the combo every time. Like I said on the last episode, that stamina morph, um, it'll be in there every time because your blast bones counts towards that third cast. Uh, major concerns for this patch that that perma block mythic is going to be yeah. annoying to to deal with. That's really the only major concern I have, honestly. And even that's not that big of a deal. I can just walk away from those people, you know. Yeah, I would say my only, and this is a light concern because, like I said, I, I think the BG meta right now is great. My my only slight concern, and it goes right in line with that meth with that mythic you were talking about. But I'm a little worried about the gap that is growing between. Um, BG builds with the objective BG builds and the deathmatch builds like there seems to be this little crack that's forming and it's kind of getting like it's just getting bigger and bigger of like you go into a match and and there's these dedicated builds kind of dedicated to objectives and when you're in there with like a you know a deathmatch style build uh, sometimes you're just throwing stuff at a brick wall like you know you just you're not gonna kill them uh, they're not going to kill you. Uh, they, you know, they can't deal damage. But every now and then, like, I, I, so I would say that's a slight concern. I'd like to see that that crack not grow any more than it is. Yeah, um, I'm with you there. I wanted to pay another visit to this Seeker Synthesis set, Davis. You brought this up on the last episode. Nothing's changed about it, but I've just kind of spent a little time thinking about it and doing a little theory crafting and. Man, it's a really interesting set. So this is the one where um, the five piece is when you cast an ability that costs resources while in combat, you reduce your potion cooldown by 0.6 seconds, and it has a 0.6 second cooldown. Shout out to Grizzly Khan. He he cleared up how this thing works. We were super confused about this thing. So basically, when you drink your potion, it gets the full 45 second cooldown every time. And then starting then, when you cast abilities, it's it's shaving 0.6 seconds off of that cooldown. And then the next time you drink a potion, it's another 45 seconds, and you start shaving it down from there. So that makes a lot more sense. 
I did some math here. I basically figured out, and I had some other people kind of check me on this, and it seems about right. We haven't actually tested it, though, but I think theoretically this is how it's going to work. So let's say, like, you're in a target dummy, and you're doing, like, a, just like a straight PvE DPS parse. You know, you're, all, you're never not casting an ability. Um, if you do that, then basically you're going to be cutting your potion cooldown in half. It's going to be around 22 seconds uh, in between your potions rather than 45 seconds. But that's if you're casting an ability every single second, right? Mm -hmm. PvP, you're not always casting an ability, so you're not going to be getting quite that much out of it. But I think you still might get a fair amount out of it, even in, even in PvP. So I kind of think of this as a uh, sustain set. So um, when we're talking about sustain sets, we have to give it the wretched <laughs> test, the wretched vitality test. Um, so if we just kind of compare the numbers and everything, if you're using tripods, on both setups, you know, with Wretched versus Seeker Synthesis. And if we're doing like a PvE DPS rotation, just like every second we're casting, then they're basically equal in terms of sustain. But in a PvP scenario, you know, if you're, if you're not casting an ability every single second, then it's not even going to come close to Wretched Vitality in terms of sustain. Yeah. But this isn't really just a sustain set, you know, it's this potion cooldown thing. There are all kinds of potions out there. There are potions, you could get higher up times on immovability. You're just completely CC immune. Uh, invisibility detection, lingering health, a really strong heal over time. Um, or just invisibility, you use a potion to turn invisible. There's all kinds of amazing potions, and being able to use those you know, up to twice as often offers a lot of value, especially like immovability. Having like even a 50% uptime on that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be nuts. Also, when you're a if you're a Nightblade, when you drink a potion, you uh, you generate twenty ultimate every time you drink a potion. Argonians have that potion passive that gives them all three resources every time they use a potion. They can use that more often. Davis, you made the point on the last episode. The clever alchemist armor set have a way higher uptime on that yeah. armor set. That could be a really great use. Plus, you're getting sustain from this set at the same time. You know, mm -hmm. so that that's a great combination. So I think like the perfect build, if you're trying to like get as much, like squeeze as much juice out of this set as you possibly can, you probably want to be an Argonian Nightblade using this set with Clever Alchemist and kind of make an Alchemist build where you have like a collection of like various potions. Yeah. Your whole quick slot wheel is like, oh, here's my invisibility potion. Here's my immovability potion. Here's my detect pot, you know, just all kinds of potions. Be creative with it. Uh, and honestly, I think that would really honestly be a very good build. I do too. I mean, you, you lost me at Argonian, but I really do hope somebody puts <laughs> this build together. <laughs> but I they mean, really I just need I, to give that passive to Nords, honestly. Uh, but I do think this would be a really cool build. I could see it being a very, very like versatile, like, you know, um, Imperial City build. Oh yeah. Really being able to kind of like adapt to different situations, whether you're up, you know, up top or down in the sewers or doing PVP or PVE, like I could see it being a really cool IC build. Um, there are speed potions too. You can get your expedition from a potion mm -hmm. have you know, be able to, I'm not sure what the duration on that is, but I don't think it's the full potion duration. Yeah, just a really neat set. I don't think that's one. That's one of those that's like it's not going to be on every build. You're you're really going to have to build around it if you want to use it. But there's some cool possibilities there. I yeah. like that. Yeah, I really like it with the Clever Alchemist. I think it, it covers a lot of... That, I don't know. Those two put together, I think, it, a lot of possibilities there. Yeah. Quick public service announcement. There is this deal with... Speaking um, of potions. This, speaking of potions. <laughs> There's something going on with uh, detect pots, invisibility detection potions. So if you've never used these things before, they're super handy. You drink a potion and you can just see anyone who's in stealth. Currently right now on the live server, it's if they're within 20 meters of you, which is a pretty huge <laughs> area. Um, on the PTS, it is if they are within 100 meters of you. And this is not anywhere in the patch notes. It has not been acknowledged by any developer anywhere on the forums or anywhere at all. There's been lots of threads like, hey, what's going on with the, t with the detect pots? Because this obviously majorly messes up things for night blades. A hundred meter radius, so a 200 meter total area. That's basically the, the entire draw distance. Yeah. 
It's both in the description of the potion, it states 100 meters, and people have tested it, and it is indeed 100 meters. It's a strange thing that the devs won't comment on it, they won't acknowledge, even if it's a bug or anything, or if it's intentional, nothing. Just total silence. And so people are just scratching our heads like, what the heck, it's four weeks into PTS, no acknowledgement, it's still this way? So it seems like it may be going live this way. A hundred meters on just like you can't be invisible around this person. Yeah. And and the way it works is like so like if you're a nightblade using the cloak ability and someone drinks this potion, then yes, they can see you, but they're the only one that can see you. And you can't there's nothing that indicates to you that they can see you. You think you're invisible. You think you're safe. But if you say crouch and go invisible that way, right? You're not using the cloak ability, you're just you're crouching and going invisible. They, since they have that detect potion active, they're preventing you from going into stealth. So they're actually revealing you for everyone in that oh, case. Everyone can see. You. I did not know that. Yeah. Um, so it's hugely disruptive to the to the classic Nightblade play style. I mean, a hundred meters. I mean, there's they can't go anywhere. Man, that is a hundred meters is an insane. Like, that's just yeah. That's outrageous. Even the twenty meters is huge, and they're super. Yeah, the potions are super massive. effective at that at that range. Anyway, public service announcement for any uh, sneaky nighty blades out there: be aware of those detect bots. Looks like it might be going live that way. Well, let's talk about some PvP. Of course, we've been doing PvP like always. I don't know if you guys have noticed, a lot of people have been mentioning, and I've noticed it myself, um, there's just been a lot of death matches lately. It's for sure more than usual. It seems like they may be stealthily kind of weighted deathmatch in the random queue, because it's it's not just us. Like, everybody's saying, like, man, deathmatch is popping up a lot here lately. No, com Not complaining. It's great. No, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's awesome. I'm talking, like, I mean, there's days it's like four, five, six deathmatches in a row. We're like, man, what is going on? They've also been just incredibly sweaty here lately. Oh, We've yeah. been talking about how, you know, these people are coming back to the game. People who quit a while back are kind of making their way back. They they have made their way back. Okay. <laughs> they're they're here. Oh yeah. And it's it's like every single match, man, you're having to work for it. Like you're really having to work for it. It's great. I love to see it. I, I love kind of, you know, being challenged, being forced to to rise up to the occasion and, and be better. Uh, it's awesome. And we've been getting a lot of awesome pre-made nights going on, uh, multiple guilds getting involved. You know, we're hopping into different Discord servers and like, hey, you guys got some people? Put a group together. Queue up. We're queuing up too. <laughs> it's just been really cool, man. The the BG kind of energy lately has just been so, so nice. Everyone's just really feeling it. Um, So, I mean, I'm just like, you know, I, I, I get up in the morning, I make my coffee. Queue up for a BG before I go to work. I come home from work and make sure, you know, I take care of my dogs, I do the dishes, do what I got to do, and let's do some BGs. You know, it's just like, it's all I want to do just because it's such a yeah. great meta and it's just, the, the game's performing, it's running well, and things are great. The Sork Reckoning, it's, it is upon us, guys. Uh, I'm, it, the, the, the tidal wave is just off of shore, okay? It's on its way. Um, I'm seeing almost daily, it's like more more and more and more sorks by the day. Mm -hmm. A lot of really, really good sorks. You know, they've gotten they've gotten a couple of buffs recently. They're getting some buffs again here pretty soon. Some offensive buffs. So that's people always find that really interesting. Um just get ready. That sork meta that we that we were warning about, I think it's it's well on its way. It's coming here pretty soon. And it's always tough to deal with. Although I've been playing with my sork <laughs> a lot here lately too. I'm not, you know, I'm not necessarily dreading it because I'm I'm planning to partake in in that enjoyment myself. Yeah. As long as they stay semi squishy, right? I mean, I know they've gotten a lot of buffs with the shields, but as long as they maintain that squishiness, their their killing power is unmatched. But as long as they mm -hmm. maintain at least somewhat of that squishiness, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I, I honestly think they're in pretty good shape. I know not everyone agrees with that, but me personally, I mean, I've been playing with my Sork a lot here lately, and granted, mine's somewhat unique, and I play it in a in a kind of a different way. 
Um, but man, I just can't imagine like you're going to, you're going to buff my Sork. That's probably not a great idea. You know, <laughs> if I was to pick a class that needed buffs, Sork would not be the one I would pick right now. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I've been playing with my Sorcerer quite a bit here lately. Intergalactic is his name. Um, and he's a hybrid mag Zork. I, I call him a mag Zork. I think of him as a mag Zork, but he's super duper hybrid actually. The only thing really that makes him a mag Zork is that a lot of his attribute points are in Magicka. And past that, it's it's super blurry. Um, this is a variant of the, the famous Sam Sork. Uncle Sam, shout out. He's in the chat right now. He pioneered this Execute Sork build that basically everyone in our guild has copied by now. Although I say copied, it's not really, you know, like everyone has their own version of this build. I don't think <laughs> any two Sam Sorks are the same, really. So I've been thinking, like, what is the Sam Sork actually? And I think the the core essence is it's that Kavach Gladiator set. Yeah. It's Curse, Fury, and Overload as part of your offense, and mm -hmm. Bloodthirsty Jewelry. I think those are the th those are the components, and whatever you fill that's, in the rest with, what you please. That's the Sam Sork right there. Yeah, and you're probably going to get pretty darn good results no matter what you do beyond that. So. My build is, uh, it's uh, Kavach Gladiator on the front bar with a Flame Staff, Wretched Vitality on the back bar with a bow, uh, the Storm Weaver's Cavort, Mythic Pants, and three Willpower on the Jewelry. And I've made quite a few tweaks, so um, the probably the biggest change that I've made is I got rid of my main spammable Crushing Shock, just deleted it from the bar, and then I remorphed Crystal Fragments into Crystal Weapon, the, the Stamina Spammable. Um, so that's my spammable now. I moved um, Haunting Curse to my front bar, and that opened up bar space on my back bar for Hardened Ward, that class damage shield that that's you know was buffed recently. Mm -hmm. and this is honestly has made everything fall into place so so very nicely. That Hardened Ward ability. So on this build, I don't have massive max stats, so my Hardened Ward isn't huge. It's only like sixty six hundred. But that's actually plenty for this playstyle. You know, I have that Stormweaver's Cavort that, that makes my um, blocking and dodging and sprinting and all of that cost Magicka instead of Stamina, right? So um, it's actually a roly-poly build. Even though it's a, a Magicka build, it's actually very dodgy, kitey, like a, like a, like a dodgy Stamina build. Um, so I'm not using uh, Hardened Ward the way like a typical mag sort does where you're like keeping that shield active and you're just like face rolling the damage and just just eating it you know that's you see a lot of sorks do that very effectively I'm not doing that I'm I'm dodging kiting all of that stuff like always and this thing's just giving me a little bit of a buffer a little bit of a like a margin for error you know if I'm trying to make my way around a corner if I like do a do like a, a vigor and cancel out of that with a roll dodge and then do a hardened ward right out of that roll dodge so it's letting vigor do full heals without having to fight against any dots or anything like that super duper helpful for just like those quick little split decision moments where it's like i just took a lot of damage i need to give myself just a little bit of a buffer to have a second to to react it's perfect for that so yeah i'm not i'm not just keeping it active and face rolling damage the way a typical mag sort does it's just when needed, I'll cast it and then heal up, and it's it really has made all the difference in my survivability. Because in the past, it was um, it was vigor and dark deal were my only yeah. healing abilities, and uh, dark deal has that cast time. It can be interrupted, and oftentimes I'll you know I'm trying to get this heal in a really clutch moment, but I can't get through that cast time before somebody kills me or interrupts me or whatever. This way, I just I do the damage shield, I cast Vigor, and I just I just get on the move, and Vigor is going to do its thing, and and the damage shield is going to allow it to to fully heal me without having to fight against all this other stuff. Crystal Weapon took me a long time to come around to this ability. We've talked a lot about uh, Crystal Weapon, how it's um you know it's that stamina uh, based class spammable that um, empowers the damage of your next two light attacks, not literally the the empower buff, but it. You know, it increases the damage of your next two light attacks, and so you uh, you weave it in between all of your other abilities, right? And we've talked before how it is a lot of damage, but it's super complicated. It's a lot to keep up with, and I've given up on it just because it's it's too much. But getting rid of Crushing Shock has helped quite a bit. That simplified the combo considerably. So now all I have to do is it's just Crystal Weapon, Haunting Curse, and Mage's Wrath, right? So it's just 
The combo just goes Curse, Crystal Weapon, Mage's Wrath, Crystal Weapon. Curse, oh. Crystal Weapon, Mage's Wrath, Crystal Weapon. It's just those three abilities alternating like that. And when it's just between those three, it really doesn't seem very complicated at all to me. And I just kind of keep rotating just like that. Um, even if they dodge, I never even think about if they dodge or what. I just keep going through the rotation. They can't dodge everything. Eventually, it's all going to land. Works great. You know, kick on the overload for even more damage and just keep doing the same thing. Crushing Shock would give me a little bit more damage if I were to fit that in there. But then we're back at a, at a, at a more crowded bar setup where I can't have all the tools that I want and an overly complicated combo that I don't want to do. This is plenty of damage as it is. The, the fact that you're alternating that crystal weapon in between everything else means they have this constant pressure coming at them, which is a weakness of, of my Sork, at least in the past, right? Like Sorks, they have this big moment of burst damage, but if that doesn't kill your target, then they're just not going to die because you don't really have the sustained pressure beyond that unless you have overload active. Yeah. Um, but this gives you that sustained pressure. If they don't die from that big burst attack, you still have some pressure to keep that health bar low until the next burst spike hits, you know, so you can you can kind of work them down a little bit better. I've noticed I, I have a lot better success against tankier targets like Dragonites and, and Wardens and people like that. Another thing, too, is you can just use Crystal Weapon as a normal spammable. You don't have to do the alternating thing. The, the initial hit hits just as hard as any other spammable. So that's something I'm trying to keep in mind is if it is a situation where I have to be kind of responsive and react very, very quickly and all of that, and I don't want to do the whole rotation, I can just do Curse Fury and spam Crystal Weapon until Fury until a Curse pops, you know, and that works too. It also balances my sustain out since it costs stamina. I'm like my offense, I'm alternating stamina, magicka, stamina, magicka the whole time. So neither resource pool is really being strained at all. You know, like recovery ticks every two seconds, and I'm casting something from those pools every two seconds. So it's yeah, basically just nice. balancing out. Yeah, super nice. The defense, it's just all about that mobility. I have Major and Minor Expedition. I have Streak. I have that Stormweaver's Cavort letting me use Magicka for all of that, which is super nice. Um, I'm using Medium Armor. Even though I think of it as a Magicka build, it's, uh, it's for Medium. Uh, it's all well-fitted, except the chest piece is heavy reinforced. Vigor, Hardened Ward, like I just said, those are my main tools that I use to keep my health bar full. Dark Conversion, I really just use Dark Conversion for the sustain, just to turn stamina into Magicka. I, I rarely use this to actually heal with. Maybe once in a great while, I'll, I'll cast the Damage Shield and, and do a, a Dark Conversion to get that heal. But it's usually not necessary. The Shield and Vigor takes care of it pretty much. And then I have that Barrier Ultimate for Emergencies. Uh, and that's really the only like group support thing I have slotted. It's a very selfish build otherwise. But yeah, it's four medium, two light, one heavy. Um, the chest is reinforced. Everything else is well fitted. The jewelry is all bloodthirsty with spell damage glyphs. The flame staff used to be sharpened. I've changed it to charge so I can have a higher uptime on um, minor breach, which gets applied by crystal weapon, and um, minor vulnerability, which gets applied by um, shock damage. Yeah, nice. So it's more damage that way for sure. Um, Apprentice Moon to Stone, Sugar Skulls for the food, Tristat Potions, um, attributes are split pretty much evenly between Magicka and Health. Just get your health up to like 29k is what I did. Everything else in Magicka. And it's super duper a hybrid. Like, like I said, like everything, like my attributes are in Magicka, but if you, if you don't look at that and you try to decide, is this a Magicka or a stamina build, it's going to be pretty confusing. You know, it's, I'm using a staff and a bow. It's, uh, I'm using a, a very healthy mix of Magicka and Stamina abilities, medium well-fitted armor, uh, Magsork offense, but it has Stamsork elements with that crystal weapon, and Stamsork defense, but with Magsork elements with that hardened ward, you know, it's just all mixed up. Um, but it's all effective. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to make a weird build. I'm just trying to use all the best tools I have, and that's just where... That's where everything landed. It's a true yeah. hybrid. Yeah, yeah. Um, cannot say enough good things about the Stormweaver's Cavort on a Magsork. I feel like nobody believes me. I've been like <laughs> backing people into corners, you know, like Stormweaver's hey, Cavort. You got to try it. You got to try it. Listen to me for a second. I got something. I'm to sure tell it's you. great, man. I'm sure it's great. You know, but nobody wants to give up like damage and things that they get from other mythics. You know, like they, they look at that and they're like, yeah, but this one gives me damage. But 
man, just try it. Just put it on there and try it. It's so, it feels so good. Like to, to play a mag sork the way you would play a stam sork. I can't explain it, man. It's just the best. It's so awesome. I, I love that you do this. It, it makes it such a unique version of the build. I really, really like it. Yeah, and I love how when I first saw the Storm Weaver's Cavort, when it first appeared in the patch notes, my, my very first thought was roly poly Magsork. And it just, it turns out it's great. It's exactly, it works. it works exactly better than I thought it would, honestly. Yeah, that's awesome. So, anyway, that's the Magsork. Davis, you got a few builds to talk about. What do you got? What do you got for us, man? Yeah, uh, at the risk of being slightly confusing, I'm actually going to. Uh, where, you know, usually we kind of talk about a build to move to the next one. I'm going to bounce around a little bit. So, you know, yeah. bear, bear with me here. Okay. One of, the, one of the builds is Bear Claw. So there you go. Sure, Bear Claw uh, with me. Aha, uh-huh, aha. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, the, the first one that I'm going to mention, as always, Lord of Nords, my DK. Still, mm-hmm. it's, it's my main. Still love Lord of Nords. He's, he's on a streak. Still absolutely loving this build with the core Riptide. It is working great. Uh, quick reminder of the build. I won't dive in it too deep just because I've, I've talked about it here recently. But it's just the five-piece core Riptide, two-piece Bloodspawn, uh, the Oaken Soul build, uh, one-piece uh, Trainee, and then the three-piece Agility. And then I have the heavy reinforced Trainee chest with six well fitted. And really, kind of what I want to bounce around here is the, the other build that I'm going to talk about kind of in unison with this one is the, uh, the Bear Claw, my, my Stam, Stamina Warden build. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's my, my Point Blank Snipe uh, Bow Brawler build. Uh, but the reason I kind of want to talk about the, the both of them is that for, you know, for a long time, you know, we have so many characters and we kind of move from character to character and kind of put a build together, get that kind of, you know, to a good place, and then we kind of move on. But um, here recently, and, you know, I'll shout out to Uncle Sam because he's he's kind of doing his own things with builds and kind of going through each build and getting them to a perfect spot. And and kind of seeing him do that is kind of what gave me an idea of this. But um, I've really kind of started going to builds and and perfecting them for specific uses, if you will. Um, and so Lord of Nords has really kind of secured, that's my sweaty four man group PVP build. Like if we're, if we're doing a four man group, we're going into sweaty pre-made matches. Like that's, that's the build I got to be on. He's, he's super brawly, takes a ton of damage, uh, good for the team can kind of be the, the, the tank and soak up the damage for the team. Uh, he does good enough pressure, uh, to kind of keep, you know, damage and he can stay alive. So that's, that's kind of my go-to, all right, like we're doing four-man sweaty pre-maids, like I'm going to grab Lord of Nords. And then what Bear Claw has absolutely become is he's kind of like my really, really fun solo or duo queue build. Like if we're, if I'm like, you know, teaming up with somebody and doing some duo queues, Bear Claw is my absolutely go-to build on that. A uh, uh, quick reminder of that build, um, it's five-piece Swamp Raider, two-piece Baylorg, uh, the Vatishran point blank uh, snipe bow, two piece trainee, and then the Oaken Soul, and it's just seven well fitted. Um, but this has absolutely become my kind of go to. Just a lot of fun, uh, you know. It, it, it can, you know, it performs well enough. Like there's good players in those matches, but if I'm just kind of hopping into regular queues, and I know there's not a bunch of like four man pre made squads going into the queues. This build works great. Like it, it's effective. It's got good results. Um, it's unique, uh, and, but it's still, you know, I would still say that it, it gets results. And so it's absolutely be kind of come like, all right, like if I'm gonna do solo duo queue, you know, I want I want to kind of get good kills. That's Bear Claw, Lord of Lords, kind of my go-to sweaty build. And so I'm kind of going through each one of my builds and kind of keeping that in mind of like, okay, like I want to have kind of that go-to build depending on what situation it is so you know my main davis he's kind of my uh main healer support for the group uh, i also have a um, a necro support but he's really kind of an off healer he doesn't have super strong heals but he's mainly about cc and so he's a good kind of off healer group and so i've kind of gone through each one of my builds and like okay like i want to have kind of this go-to situation like whatever whatever I'm feeling or whatever the mood kind of needs or whatever the situation requires, I kind of want to have that specific build that kind of fits into that slot. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, for Oak and Soul, that's kind of what you need to do, right? Like, yeah, you want exactly. to specialize and just exactly. really go all in on that. Very, very specialized builds. And so, Lord of Nords and Bear Claw, they're both set. Like, they, they are locked in, even with the upcoming patch. Like, no, no changes to them. They are in great shape. Um, been really happy with the results that I've gotten on both of them. Um, doing really well. Um, the, the third build that I kind of want to talk about is, is the one that I've kind of been working on here recently, uh, Bard of Sovereign Guard. That's my, mm-hmm. my third Templar. Uh, he's a, <laughs> he was originally a Magpolar. He's, he's, he's still a Magpolar. It's a Magpolar build. Uh, but I finally put together the, the Beampolar build. Um, really what this build is, 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 you know, Sam kind of already put this build together. Um, so it's just official five build piece. consultant. Yeah, Sorry. it's five. Pe- <laughs> yeah, five piece war maiden, five piece deadly strikes, oak and soul, and one piece magma. Um, I think this was originally Sam's beam polar build, and he dropped oak and soul. He's he's not a one bar guy. He he needs those two bars. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I just have it uh, seven piece divines. But really, what I kind of learned from this, I- I'm glad I put it together. But really, I kind of just came away of like a beam polar is not for me. Like, it's just not my style build. Absolutely, I don't have to tell people how effective it is, how good the Beamplar is out there. And there's a lot better Beamplar builds than this one out there. This is kind of a, a simplified version of it. Um, and, you know, we did, I've only done probably less than five BGs uh, with this character. And it it got kills. Like, it, it did what it was supposed to. It was kind of lower damage, but, you know, got quite a few kills. Uh, it's kind of a little bit on the squishier side, but I just kind of learned that beam is not for me. Like I just kept thinking every BG that I was doing with this build is that if I wanted to have this kind of execute kill focused build, I would much rather do the Sam Sork build. I have one of those. Um, and I, I, I kind of like just throwing, um, you know, the, the fury on a character and then not worrying about them and just kind of moving around, staying mobile where the beams kind of a focused, a lot more higher damage, a lot more guaranteed kill, but um, that's really kind of what it came away from. Is that this? It's just not really my play style uh, to to kind of have the beam where you're just you really just need to focus. All right, who's the next lowest lowest health player out there? And I need to throw the beam on them and just kind of focus and go one to one that way. Um, it's extremely one dimensional. Yeah, I just I, I, I just, have a beam player as well, and I'll jump on it once in a while, and it's. Two or three matches and I'm I'm done, you know. Like that was the part that surprised me the most is because for how effective these are and how good of, like the beam players are right now, I just didn't have any fun on it. Like of all the builds I've played recently, like I just I didn't have fun on this one. It just it wasn't for me. It really yeah. was the the fun level was pretty low. And that's just me specifically. Like I know there's a lot of people out there that really do well with the beam player and they really like that. And I think that's just, you know, that's good. There's different play styles in the game, but I, I need my Nord that's going to be right up there in people's faces. I, I much more prefer the Brawlier. Let's keep, you know, a lot of pressure, a lot of damage. Uh, I think that was the part that I, it just felt odd to me is that the end of matches, I would have higher kill counts, but my damage numbers were like a third or half of what other players in my group was. And it was like throwing me off. Yeah. And from a team comp standpoint, you know, I feel like that build, you're really just bringing one ability yeah. to the table you know yeah. and like what else are you offering the team that like another class wouldn't offer more of or or something mm-hmm. um i was thinking like shout out to king nar he put a he, he put together a templar healer build recently that it's just a healer but it has the beam slotted and that's the one offensive ability and honestly I, I wonder if that's actually the best thing you could possibly do with a templar like as far as like the value being added to a team um because what templars are really good at maybe more so than anyone except maybe wardens is just staying alive yeah. you know they're they're very good at just kind of being immovable and just like you cannot kill me so i could see a lot of value in a ward or in a in a templar that is just like plants themselves in the middle of everything cannot be killed pumping out heals and then as soon as someone gets low execute and it's a very efficient team setup if your healer is your executioner you know you're kind of freed up with the rest of your team to to experiment there but i think yeah. if you're looking if you're like a templar main you're like what's the best thing i can do for a battlegrounds team it's probably that be a, a dedicated healer and just have that beam somewhere because you don't have to be 
you don't have to be offensively specced for that thing yeah. to deal a crap ton of damage. Yeah, and I absolutely, I would agree with you. I think that's the way to go is to, is kind of build a heal support with the beam. Um, and the only reason I really am not doing that is because I already, like I said, I have three Templars. I already have a very heal focused. And so I wasn't going to make a secondary healing Templar. But I don't know. Um, I've got the build put together and it's it's done. It's It's got all the pieces, but I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I'll utilize it a whole lot. I just I wouldn't have a lot of fun with this one. Yeah. One more build that we have to talk about does not belong to either of us. Uh, this is Uncle Sam's uh, Icy Paws, his Magicka Warden build. Shout out to Uncle Sam in the chat right now. The reason I'm talking about this is because I got a, a direct message from Sam in Discord uh, a few days ago. And basically he was saying, here is my final Magicka Warden build. It is, it is complete. Locked in. And, and Sam never says that. Okay? Never. Like Sam's builds are never complete. They're always in flux. So if he's saying this is the build, I'm perking up. I'm listening. I feel Sam. like we need confirmation that this is still the build from, from Sam. Sam and chat. But still yeah. the build. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> um, so Sam gave me the full go ahead to share this build with the world. Let me tell you guys, if you just want to straight carry every team on your back to victory, this is it. Like every every time we're we're grouping up and Sam's like, what what do you want me to what character do you want me to bring? That's a stupid question, Sam. You know very well. <laughs> <laughs> um You want four million damage and, and two million heals? Sure. Sure. Take it. Um all you need is this build and Sam playing it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh so the build is, uh, it's the Ice Furnace set, uh, Rally and Cry on the front bar, is that right, Sam? Uh, with a Charge Frost Staff, uh, Maelstrom Frost Staff on the back bar, so Frost Staffs on both bars, it's infused, uh, and a Gaze of Sithis Mythic Helm. So, pretty standard setup, honestly, really, but it's just, it's very, very powerful. Uh, and Sam tried, I mean, every possible combination of gear you can imagine for a every Magical Every possible Warden. set. <laughs> a lot of really great setups, too. Um, but this is the final one he landed on. Ice Furnace, Rallying Cry, Maelstrom Frost Staff, Gaze of Sithis, Mythic Helm. Um, and the way he plays it, it's, it's very support-focused. It's a ton of AoE pressure and group heals. Uh, when we play together, he's often not the person with the most kills. I mean, he usually has at least you know, half a dozen or so. Um, but he's not really trying to get all the kills. He's pumping in all this damage into the environment and kind of giving his teammates the alley-oop there, you know, and we're the ones actually snatching them up most of the time. Um, but it's it's oppressive, though. It's so much AoE damage, just like your, your teammates just stepping into the environment are already struggling. Yeah, like a typical sweaty match, 4 million damage, 2 million heals mm -hmm. is pretty typical from Sam, I would say. So um, this is a direct quote from Sam. He says, fun things to mention about the build. Um, an infused Oblivion Glyph is OP. Um, the Vine's Minor Lifesteal uh, is not affected by Battle Spirit. So that's a pretty good heal. And the Eye of the Storm, Destra Staff, Frost Ultimate, um, he says is better than Northern Storm. I think it's definitely more damage. Um, so he's, get he's getting better results with, uh, from the Destro Ultimate than the actual Class Ultimate. Um, other key abilities that Sam's really leaning on is Polar Wind, best heal in the game. Yeah. Uh, Deep Fisher, Green Lotus, Bird of Prey, some other important abilities there. Uh, highly recommend it, man. I mean, it's you're going to be hard pressed to find another just kind of all around Warden build that's not just a healer, you know. And this is, I think, this is exactly the way you play a Warden too. You know, you're you're creating this amazing rock solid foundation for your whole team to stand on. And you're just making all of them better, and you're and you're enabling them to to be successful, you know. And you're the one kind of carrying them to victory. Um, you may not have all the the kills in the end, but you know they, they they're all the, all the kills that the team got. You were a big part of that. So thanks for sharing the build, Sam. It's out there now. Sam Sorks, and and then the Sam did, and the icy paws. He's, he's a Kaji. Icy paws. So yeah, that's that's kind of all that's going on in PvP land. In PvE land, uh, we did a normal Asylum Sanctorum run last week. Uh, shout out to Morty, aka Wilhelm, 
everybody's after the asylum bows in that place. Uh, we did two runs. Morty got the bow both times. Uh, the first time he gave it to Sam. The second time he gave it to me. There so, you go. What a bro. Thanks, Morty. Um, I haven't used it in a build yet, but I do plan to very soon. And then just last night, we did a normal Rock Grove trial. We just did one run of that. It's a little bit longer. But we're farming that Saxleal uh, set for King Nar. He's wanting to use that on a support build. Really fun trial, honestly. I could see that one seems like it's pretty tough on veteran, probably. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a couple of fights where you can just tell. You're like, this seems like this would be complicated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it was fun. We had a bunch of goons in there. We had to pick up maybe four or five people out of Craglorn to to complete the group. But um, yeah, it was really fun. Yeah, it was a good time. All right. So um, yeah, that's what's been going on. Let's talk about some emails. We got some emails. Uh, scrollingpodcast at gmail.com. That's the place to send them. Uh, first email comes from Grant. Grant says, hey, scrollers. Uh, I've only been listening for a week, but this is absolutely my new favorite podcast. I'm a longtime player, but never really jumped into PvP other than random dailies to level up new characters. This podcast has me theory crafting PvP builds while I'm supposed to be working. Nice. That's great, man. Welcome, Glad to welcome, hear. <laughs> welcome to the club on that one. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, welcome to the last five years of my career. Um, how how scrolling started. <laughs> <laughs> Now for my question. The main thing that has <clears throat> that has turned me off from BGs in the past is the fact that it's three teams. Having three teams seems completely arbitrary to me, and I feel that the only reason they did that was to continue the theme of the three banners war. Do you think two teams instead of three would be more competitive and in turn more balanced and fun? Davis, I'll let you go first. What do you think about that? Two teams instead of three? So, you know, I, I, I can understand where he's coming from because, it you know, it, it, when you first look at it, I can see the three teams being odd, like this team versus this team, who's better. But I, I will say this. I absolutely think the third team brings balance to BGs. Like, the, it, it absolutely is necessary. Um, the, the two teams going at it, uh, and we've seen this. We've been in death matches where one team drops out. It, when you have just two teams going at it, it's decided in maybe, you know, two, you know, usually one, but maybe two fights. The the clear victor of who's going to win these fights. It's kind of decided. Uh, right. But, but that third team brings balance to it because they're they're kind of the chaos to the the the, the confrontation, if you will, as they'll come in. And then you have to, you know, there's a whole new strategy of this team's coming in. And I, there's so many times that we've been in a, a, um, a death match, a good death match, and we've been the winning team. And I would, I would honestly say that, that the other team was better than us, but, but we were the winning team based on, you know, playing smart and good positioning. And, and that's where I think the third team is absolutely necessary. Is it, it, it breaks apart the, you know, just simple, this team, the better team's going to win every time. That third team just brings an entire chaotic factor. You can't really plan for it. It makes all, all the teams have to kind of stay moving, be smart, be strategic. And so I absolutely think that the third team is, is what one of the major parts of what makes the, the BGs really well. And they're, they're a major part of the balance uh, in a BG. Yeah, Sam says, when there's no chaos, the brawl team always wins. Uh, the chaos allows positioning and movement, so it makes all classes and builds have a chance. Yeah, that's kind of what you were saying there. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I I feel the same way. I've I've always felt like the three teams is a good idea because, because of that exact same thing. When you And we, we, we've all had matches where, you know, you have three teams and there's one clearly dominant team, um, but you can still have a good time, you know, because you can kind of you can kind of plan around that other team, you know, and kind of yeah. be smart with your positioning and, and come up with creative strategies. If it's just one team versus another team, there's no creative strategies. You know, you're just going to be smashing your faces into yep. each other the whole time. And it's just, I think of it like, it's like a four V four duel, basically. Like it's, it's yeah. the same reason I don't really care for dueling because really when you, when you duel for so long and you're, you're up against people who are of equal skill and everything, then it's just math, 
You know, it's just, does this build mathematically beat this build? You know, you could just put it in a computer simulation and don't even have to play the game. So that's why I don't like it. There's not, how how does this team comp go versus this team comp? And, and skill isn't as much of a factor. I know it still is a factor, but not nearly as much. So yeah, I like the chaos, especially um, me and Sam, we've said lots of times, like we'll have builds like, oh, this build needs the chaos, you know, like yeah. I, I can't, I can't do anything with this build unless there's like some kind of stuff going on already for me to take advantage of. But Jural is right. There should be an option to just do two teams. Like if we have a lobby <laughs> and we could just put two teams only in there. Absolutely. That would be great. I would love that because there are times like we have other friends and other guilds and we kind of playfully talk a little trash to each other, you know, and be like, well, let's see, let's see, put your money where your mouth is, you yeah, know, let's go to two teams. It'd be nice to be able to do that. It would be. Um, but yeah, in lieu of that, I, I would rather have three than two teams. Um, just, yeah, just because of all that. Like, yeah, a lot of those matches, just like you said, I mean, 60 seconds, we already know the outcome. We don't yeah. have to play the rest of the match. Exactly. So, Grant, you're wrong. No. <laughs> Thanks for writing, man. Thank you very much for, for writing in, dude. Uh, next email is from Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam says, um, if both of you were to come up with your ideal eight-man goon squad for the Imperial City White Strakes Mayhem event, uh, what kind of comps would you like? Classes, sets, heals, or DPS, etc.? Uh, Sam also says, P.S. If anyone's wondering, he played with King Nar just recently and he does still smell. Ugh, the problem continues. King Nar. You need to get on that dude. King. <laughs> All right. Sam, I'm not the world's best, like, group theory crafter, man. I'm very, like, solo minded with my builds a lot of the time. So I don't know <laughs> if I have great answers here. But I can shout out Joral because we've been kind of talking through this thing recently. Um, trying to plan for this this event coming up, which is um, day after tomorrow, thir Thursday, as of the time we're recording this, uh, that it starts. Pretty exciting. But Jorah was just kind of talking about it makes perfect sense. You kind of want to take advantage of the fact of the fact that you can have really great buff coverage in a team by having you know a lot of different classes and builds and stuff present. You know, like wardens give everyone an armor buff, so. No need to slot an armor buff. Warden's already giving you that. You know, Dragon Knights give you your weapon damage buff, so you don't need to bother slotting that either. You can open up that slot for something else, you know, and take advantage of those kinds of things. Um, you probably want, so you probably want like one of every class pretty much in the group, except Necro is probably not essential because they don't have any unique <laughs> buffs that they give anyone. <laughs> um, but aside from Necro, every class has some unique buff that they give the whole group. So you probably want one of everyone. Uh, you probably want nearly everyone in the group wearing at least one group support set. Um, whatever else they're wearing is kind of up to them. But uh, at least one support set on every person. I would say the exception to that would be like if you have someone whose job is just to be the damage, you know, and uh, if. If you're doing enough damage to justify that, then maybe maybe you don't have to have a support set there. Um, yeah, Jarl says even the new class, the new Arcanist, gives a minor buff to the team, but but Necro does not. <laughs> Super sad. Um, and uh, you want somebody running rapids? This is isn't something I really thought of before, but Jarl makes a great point. If you have someone uh, running uh, the charging maneuver morph, then nobody has to slot any kind of mobility stuff at all because that gives you both major and minor expedition to your group hmm. um it's a very expensive ability though so you need to give it to someone who can afford to cast it um but yeah that's basically it one of every class uh try to get as many unique support sets as you possibly can so like somebody in rallying cry transmutation yeah. spell power cure powerful assault sanctuary yep. you know just get everybody in a support set um, take advantage of those group buffs so you can optimize your bar, uh, bar setup as much as you possibly can without wasting slots and stuff you don't need. Um, put rapids on somebody and you're good to go. I think that's, I think that's about the best I can do. Uh, and yeah, more wardens. Yeah. Just if you can, <laughs> if you have one of every class, then whatever is left over, just make them wardens. Just all, just fill it up with wardens. <laughs> I think that's about the best I can do, Sam. I don't know if I can specifically say, okay, like you need this build and then you need this build. I don't, I don't think I can. 
be that specific with it. Does it seem good? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I would agree with you. I'm not super experienced with theory crafting like actual team comps. Uh, we're much more like solo, single build. Uh, we don't do a lot of theory crafting with team comps. But yeah, I would say exactly what you say. You know, it mentioned eight man goon squad. The only thing that I agree with everything you said, the only thing that I kind of added in that is, you know, breaking up like how many supports, how many, you know, brawlers, how many. I, I would probably do maybe like three healer support builds, you know, five. Uh, the re- other five, I think, would be, you know, damage. And I would probably split that damage up with, you know, three or four brawlers and then at least have one or two kind of just execute focus builds to kind of secure kills. Yeah, and probably some of those damage builds will have some off heals as well. To yeah, yeah, to some of those could be absolutely be kind of hybrids. Mm-hmm. Maybe you want to sork with a negate. Negate super valuable in some situations. Yeah, probably yeah. want earth gore on somebody. Earth gore can be very, very clutch in in some situations. So thanks for the email, Uncle Sam. Uh, We'll uh, we'll have more details day after tomorrow. We'll have this group together, and, uh, <laughs> and you'll know, won't you? <laughs> um, next email comes from our good friend Pelinal Whitestrake. Uh, Pelinal says, "Greetings, scrollers. What will the battleground uh, landscape look like come Necrom? Will the adjustments to DK and Warden be enough to dislodge them from the top? Will the buffs to Nightblade and Sork make them completely unbearable?" Will anyone notice the buffs to Templar? <laughs> will we all be cowering in fear from the new Flame Skull, or will we be crying about the new Pay to Win class? Let's hear the Necrom class power rankings. Um, so I think DKs and Wardens will still very much be at the top. Yeah, don't don't worry about that. They're going to be all the way up there. I don't think they're coming down at all. Um. They are getting a couple of small nerfs uh, with this patch, but I don't, I don't think it's something either of them are even going to notice even happened. Um, I think Sorcerers are going to be up there with them, though. I think kind of that top three slot, I, I do think Sorks are going to, as far as like popularity and just how frustrating they are because you're seeing them all the time and they're really good, I think they're going to be up there with them. Um, Nightblade's probably going to be about in the same spot they are right now. There's, that is to say, very good. Yeah, just right under Sork, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, Nightblade has maybe, well, I don't know. I was going to say Nightblade has maybe a little bit more support capability, but maybe not. That Matriarch's really good. Um, Templar, they're basically just going to be more impossibler to kill than they already <laughs> are. <laughs> uh, otherwise, not much difference with Templar. I think they're pretty much going to be in the same spot they, they already are, just harder to kill. Yeah, not that they're in a terrible spot, but uh, you know, Backlash got that buff, and honestly, I think it's probably a decent time to be. I mean, out of the past six months, this is definitely the best time to be playing Templar. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with that absolutely. Yeah, and for Necro, I just put a sad face. <laughs> I <have> no, <laughs> no notes for Necro. <laughs> <laughs> That's your class rankings. It's DKs, Wardens, and Sorcerers near the top. Nightblades and Templars in that mid-range. Uh, Necros at the very bottom. And that's it. That's what we got. Uh, Pelinal says, your brother in Akatosh, Pelinal White Street. Nice. Anything to add to that, Davius? Yeah, I mean, I, I pretty much, I, 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 you know, I didn't do the full rank, but I, I pretty much agree with you. I did kind of a one, two, three, and my one, two, three is absolutely Warden, then DK, then Sork. Um, and the only thing that I would add to that is that, you know, with those three being at the top, it kind of reflects, I feel like, why the meta is so good right now, because I would say Warden's at the top, um, but Warden has their shortcomings. Like, as, as good as they are at everything, I still think they kind of struggle to get actual kills. Like, I actually love where Wardens are right now. Yeah, like it, it, to say they're at the top, but to say that they actually still have something they, that they struggle with or they're not great at, I think is a great sign of balance. Um, same thing with DK being at number two. Like um, DK's being at that high, they're really great night right now. But I mean, I would say this is a pretty common discussion, even in the Discord. Me and you talk about it. Um, DK is a great class to always be at the top because it's kind of a, um, I would say it's kind of the class with the least amount of cheese in, in mm-hmm. their kind of kit. And so like, you know, uh, when you play a DK, you, you kind of have to know how to play the class, you know, it's kind of, here's the abilities, here's what you can do. 
Um, so they kind of, you know, if, if, if it's a good DK, it's usually a good player um, that is behind it. And so I think that works well. And then I would put Sork at the third. Uh, just that's the best killer in the game. Sorks, Sorks are the are the best, um, best at getting kills. But they are like if you can get a hold of one, you can kill them. And so mm-hmm. uh, I think that's just a good sign of where the meta is. Those being the top three, but they all have something kind of pulling them back, if you will. And I think that's that's absolutely where we want the meta to be. Yeah, you make a great point about wardens. You know me and, and everybody really was getting so frustrated with them there for a while, but it really wasn't the wardens, you know, it was wall of frost, which yes, absolutely. wardens used, but, and I think it was kind of associated with wardens cause they're the ones really using it. Um, but since they fixed that and they took the immobilization away, man, I love wardens. I think they're great. I mean, it, it, they're frustrating to go up against because they're just, they're so strong and they're hard to kill and they make their team so much better, but it's, always in my mind that is what they are supposed to do yeah. they're supposed to just elevate their team and they personally aren't necessarily getting all the glory they're just they're making everyone around them better absolutely so yeah i think i think it's great that wardens are at the very top because they're at the top for support reasons that's awesome yeah so davius pick out pick out an email to be a winner oh boy here we go you know, I, I've, I've thought about this. I've got a lot of thoughts into this. Uh, I think I'm going to go with, with good old Uncle Sam. Uncle uh, Sam. And really, with, with the winnings, Uncle Sam, you know, I really hope you can help out King Nar with that, with that smelling issue. You know, maybe you can <laughs> provide some funds. Get to, this man to some that, soap. Some get, that situation, get that situation cleaned up. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, Sam. I don't know, let's say, what, 250000 Does that sound all right? There you go. I'll say that much. 250K. We'll do that 1 million again one of these days. So once again, that is scrollingpodcast at gmail.com. Ask us any questions. Make a suggestion for the show. Tell us jokes. Say hello. Uh, shout out to a friend. Whatever you like. Scrollingpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. We have a guild. The guild's name is Stoons Goons. It is literally the best PvP guild in the game that also just happens to be the best named guild on the PCNA server. And it's also the official guild of the Scrolling Podcast. I I was doing that from memory that time. (laughs) There you go. You've you've got it down. You know, (laughs) Stoon Skins, that that plug of the guild, it's come so far. So far it's come. That's come quite a a long way, wasn't it? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it has. Oh, yeah. If you would like to be a member of Stoons Goons, send us an email at scrollingpodcast at gmail.com and I'll send you an invite. If your guild roster is full, you can join us on the Discord. That's really where most of the action is happening anyway, where we're having theory craft discussions and sharing memes and all kinds of stuff. And everyone who's on the Discord, as far as I'm concerned, is a fully fledged goon. So you'll come along on any and everything that we do. Uh, so scroll on podcast at gmail.com and we'll send you an invite to the discord or the guild or both. If you would like to support the show, one easy thing you can do is go to the Apple podcasts app and give us a, a review and a rating. That'll just make it easier for people to find us. Uh, if you'd like to go a step further than that and help us in a bigger way, you can go to patreoncom slash scroll and podcast and receive Stoon's boon for $3 a month. That gets you some extra Discord benefits, a guaranteed shout out on every episode. You get access to the Booncast. We have videos, written build guides, and some other stuff. And of course, you're helping support the show. That's the greatest gift of all, just knowing that you're helping us out and keeping the show going. So patreon.com slash scrolling podcast is the place to go if you'd like to help us out with that. If you can't do Patreon right now, then just come hang out on the Discord. That doesn't cost anything. We have one of the best communities on the internet, and we'd love to have you. Everyone's welcome. Uh, so scroll on podcast at gmail.com. I'll send you an invite. Shout out to the chat who we have here. Ghost Pants, Joral, King Nar, Taggard, Uncle Sam. Do we have anyone else? Thank you guys so much for being here. Really adds a lot to the show. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. Also shout out to Uncle Sam, Joral, King Nar, KDMS, Slavka, Axolion. I've all just been playing a lot lately, doing a lot of BGs, having an awesome time. You guys have just become such good friends of mine. I always look forward to to hanging out with you guys um, at the end of the day and everything. 
Shout out to the Elder Goons, the OGs. Thanks for sticking around for so long, guys. We really appreciate you. Uh, and shout out to our Stoons Boon, our Patreon supporters, uh, Porkbody, Toadster, Gummy Bear, Grizzly Khan, Thomas, Taggard, and our newest supporter, Mother of Dragons. Thank you so much, guys. We really appreciate it. Davis, anything else? Uh, I think that's everything. Excited for this patch. I know we still have some time and we got an extra week on there, but uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to, I'm excited to hop at a BG and just see like seven Arcanists in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, June 5th is the release date. So we got one, two, three, basically a month. It's basically okay. a month away. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Anyway, that's the end of the show, guys. Thank you very much for listening and we will see you next time.